This is Mitchell Zoller from Elsevier Global Medical News. I'm speaking from New York at the annual advanced postgraduate course of the American Diabetes Association. I'm talking with Dr. George Backris, who's professor of medicine and director of the Hypertensive Diseases Unit at the University of Chicago. And Dr. Backris, at your lecture today, you were talking about a role for um, uh, aldosterone blockade in um, obese patients um, with uh, uncontrolled hypertension, and if you could just briefly tell us um, some of the thinking behind that and what results you've been seeing with that kind of uh, treatment strategy. Sure. There's a literature that has been building over the last three to four years uh, at the bench that has uh, tried to elucidate why what was originally observed clinically, that is high aldosterone levels in obese people that did not have primary hyperaldosteronism. The question is, why should that go on? What they found was that the adipocyte itself is its own little mini endocrine organ, and the subcutaneous adipocyte actually produces substances that stimulate the ERK-1-2 uh, MAP kinases. And as a result of that, stimulate other enzyme pathways that stimulate steroidogenesis and ultimately stimulate increases in aldosterone. So you have almost obesity is, should be thought of or could be thought of almost as a mild secondary hyperaldosteronism state. So what happens is these patients subsequently develop some hypokalemia, although they don't have to develop low, very low potassiums, but they can have potassiums of 3.6, 3.5. And clinically, uh, the work of David Calhoun and others in Alabama has shown very clearly that use of aldosterone receptor blockade with drugs like spironolactone and aplerinone have dramatic blood pressure lowering effects in obese individuals. And so that's further evidence supporting the role of aldosterone in such people. And of course, a large subgroup of these people have sleep apnea. And it's not that sleep apnea is actually being benefited by this, but it's in fact the sleep apnea may further worsen the blood pressure already seen in obese people related to this, and as a result, uh, blocking aldosterone uh, receptors so the aldosterone can't work uh, before you lose your weight, which would then obviously reduce the levels. Um, would be the way to go. Right. And so in your current practice now, you are for um, obese patients who are unresponsive to perhaps uh, a, a couple of what are conventional first-line antihypertensive drugs. You're now employing uh, aldosterone blockade as a add-on and getting good results with that. Yeah. If you have, if, you, if you're obese, uh, I'm normally going to start you on at least a couple of drugs up front. And if not the second, certainly the third is going to be aldosterone receptor blockade, usually in the presence of uh, calcium antagonism and either a diuretic or uh, another uh, blocker of the renin-angiotensin system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this would be with either spironolactone or aplerinone? Would right. Be aplerinone is a little shorter acting. Uh, you don't have to worry about gynecomastia with it the way you do spironolactone. But at 25 milligrams of spironolactone, the incidence of gynecomastia is relatively low. Mm -hmm. It's a dose-dependent thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Backris. Uh, this is Mitchell Zoller from Elsevier Global Medical News reporting from the uh, advanced postgraduate course of the American Diabetes Association in New York.